Hello, I'm Cheyenne Wilson, and I will be discussing the procedures used for assessing speech disorders as long along with um, how we use them in the school system and what roadblocks happen um, that we could see potentially with other teachers. Um, first of all, students who have speech sound disorders are at a disadvantage whenever it comes to phonological awareness. These students may not be able to isolate um, phonemes, identify phonemes, um, put words in that have the same sounds together. <clears throat> Most importantly, they may not be able to blend um, or segment or count the number of sounds that are in the words. They also struggle with deleting sounds to make new words. In a way that, um, an easy way that our book, uh, Cruder, um, suggested for us to uh, test these students would be um, using the Yop Singer test of phoneme segmentation and this the book mentioned that this is a very simple test that takes maybe 20 minutes I personally have never heard of it um, and I plan on googling um, to see if I can find some videos on how to administer this test and where we can find it because I do think it would be beneficial for uh, kindergarten teachers uh, most importantly to see if these students are catching on to these skills. I do know that if these students are having the speech problem or unable to reduce the sounds or, you know, hearing different sounds than what they're supposed to be hearing, um, our speech language pathologist, she administers the Goldman Fristo test of achievement. Um, and if the students make a certain score on that test, she then qualifies them for an IEP and she provides services to them. Um, to help, you know, uh, correct their speech um, impediments, and um, and she, while doing that, she focuses on several phonological awareness uh, tasks in her lessons to help the students be able to differentiate between those sounds. Um, another way our teachers have been increasing or implementing um, phonological awareness is doing this program every day. Um, it's the Hegarty Phonemic Awareness. Um, it's a 10-minute lesson and in these lessons it focuses on rhyming, onset fluency, blending phonemes, um, isolating the final sounds, segmenting phonemes, adding initial phonemes, deleting initial phonemes, um, substituting phonemes. Also goes back to alphabet knowledge as well as language awareness. Um, the kids really enjoy doing this. I do this with my small group whenever they come to the resource room on top of what the teacher has already done for the day with them. Um, we, we have also found out um, that these speech sound disorders factor into um, the students being able to read fluently, which then affects their reading comprehension. And then along the way of getting older, they, it affects their spoken as well as their written language. Some roadblocks that I see um, at, in the school system or in my school particular with um, the students that have these disorders, some teachers just don't understand, you know, um, the language barriers that some of these kids may have coming into the school. Um, and kind of do, and they do get frustrated with these students um, not listening or paying attention or following those simple one-step directions. Um, also, they they struggle with um, whenever they read the kids are reading. Um, they don't they're not paying attention to their speech sounds, and they may say, "Well, they're not saying that word correctly, and they're not reading that word right," which that may be a substitution for their speech errors. Um, those are a few where roadblocks I see. Um, along with, you know, the teachers may not have an adequate training with um, the phonemic awareness and ways to teach those skills to the younger students and maybe in the no collaboration with the uh, speech language pathologist, the pathologist and the special education teacher.